can you set up a WordPress site on AWS in about 10 minutes? I'm gonna show you a service that claims to do just that. My name is Michelle and I release videos on marketing websites and all things design. So if you find this information helpful, please be sure to give the video a like and consider subscribing if you enjoy these types of topics. Today, I'm gonna to introduce you to OneClickSetup.com, which allows you to launch a WordPress site on AWS in just minutes. When you host on AWS, you can actually save money on hosting by using their dedicated servers. AWS offers the fastest and most secure servers in the world. That's just gonna give your site that extra protection that it needs and the speed to make your site run pretty quickly. If you're curious about pricing, with OneClickSetup.com, you can install a server with a one-time installation fee of $99. Now they do offer a couple of add-ons, so you can connect a domain that you already have, and that is a $10 fee, and then you can also set up an SSL certificate for an additional $10. So you do have some options, when you're setting it up. Now this cost is per server. So if you plan on installing multiple servers, then these fees would be required for every server that you do set up. Before diving in on how to set up a site, I do wanna mention that in my experience, it is best if you have a bit of knowledge on AWS before going this route, because if you've never used AWS before, it can be quite overwhelming and confusing once you get inside the dashboard. Additionally, as of now, if you need to make alterations in things such as the server size that you select, and that'll make a little bit more sense once we go through the process, that's gonna have to be done on the AWS side. So if you don't know what you're doing, you could find yourself running into a bit of trouble. Having said that, let's get started and let me show you how to install a WordPress site on AWS using one-click setup. The very first thing that we need to do is go to aws.amazon.com. We need to make sure that we have an account first before we go to one-click setup. So all you need to do when you get to this landing page is either if you already have an account, then you can log in, but sign into the console is the button that you would click. And then we want to actually create a new AWS account. So what you would do is enter in your email address and then you can choose a name for your account. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill those details in there and then I'm gonna hit verify email address. So they've sent an email to my account. All I need to do now is insert the verification code that was sent to me. With my one-time verification code in there, I'm just gonna hit verify. And then now it's time for me to set a user password. I will fill this out. Once you have your user password and you have it typed in there for a second time to confirm it, then we continue to step one of five. So we've got a few more details. I'm gonna fill this out and then we'll move to step two. The same thing goes for this screen. You're gonna fill out some information. I'm gonna go past it because you don't need to see all the details, but just make sure that you fill out your billing information and then continue on to the next step. The next screen is going to ask you to confirm your identity so you can put your mobile phone number in and verify that way. Step four of five, you're gonna get that verification to your phone. You just need to pop that in and hit continue. And then the final screen here, just select your support plan. All you need to do is just choose basic support free and then complete sign up. Once you have successfully signed up, then you just need to go to the AWS management console. So we'll click that button there. And then we just need to log in with our credentials. So I will do that now. And then finally, we can see that I am in my account. So now that we have that set up, it'll take you a few minutes to do that. So if you don't already have an account, just know that that's not going to factor into the 10 minute setup time. Once we've got our account set up, now we can go to oneclicksetup.com and we are going to want to create an account here. So I'll just click this button. You'll put your name, your email, and your password in, and then agree to the terms. All we need to do is hit the sign up button, and then we can see that we are ready to connect to our AWS account. So I would just click this button, connect to AWS, and it's asking for an access key and a secret key. So. If you aren't sure how to set this up, they do have some lovely instructions down here where you can go step-by-step step to create your user. Now it took me a little bit of time because I hadn't already had an AWS account set up before. So if you're wondering where to go, you can go back to the AWS management console and then under this drop down here, if you go to security credentials, 
You'll see on the left-hand side where it says users. And then because I don't have any users added, I need to make one. So we're just gonna click the add user button up here. I'm gonna give myself a username. I'm just gonna say Michelle test for now. And then I wanna select access key, programmatic access. And then we're gonna go next to permissions because we do need to make sure that we have permissions set. So the first thing you'll do is you'll come over to this tab here that says attach existing policies directly. So I'll choose that. And then what I'm looking for is Amazon EC2 full access. So we can easily, you could scroll if you really want to, but uh, it's probably best if you just type it in there. And then we're gonna check this box here so that we've got that selected. We'll go next to tags. With tags, this is an optional stage. If you really wanna do that, you can. Since this is just a demo, I'm gonna kind of just breeze past this and we'll go next to review. And now I can see that I've got my username here, I've got my managed policy, and then I'm gonna click create user. So now that it's created, I have my credentials. You can see that I have got an access key and a secret access key. I highly recommend you guys just download the CSV file so that you can make sure that you've got these, a copy of this somewhere. If you navigate away from the screen, you're not gonna be able to see your secret access key unless you write it down. So if you wanna write it down somewhere, do that. Otherwise, you could easily just click this button to download your credentials there. Now that we've got our user set up, let's go back to one click setup and we're just gonna enter in those access keys that we just downloaded. And then I will hit save. And now we need to choose the version of WordPress that we would like to start off with. If you wanted to start with an older version, you could definitely do that. If you wanna start with the latest and greatest, which I probably recommend, you would choose whatever the newest version is. And then we go to select our preferred region. I'm gonna choose Northern California and then I'll scroll a bit. We need to select our server size. So based on how much traffic we think we're going to get with our site will relate to the size of the server that we need and then how much it will be for a month. So I'm gonna start off with the micro. This would be 100 to 1,000 visitors per month for around $5 a month. The next step we're going to look at is add-on services. So if you already have a domain and you'd like to connect it to this server space, then just enter in your domain here. It does cost an extra $10. So these are add-on services. You don't have to go through with this step. Once we put in our domain, we have the option if we want to, to enable SSL, which would also be recommended. So you would just check this box and it's going to be another $10 on to your transaction. Once we've got all of our settings selected, we're gonna go on to continue to pay. And so here we've got a summary of all the charges that we're going to have. Now for you guys, I do have a coupon code which you can use to get 10% off of your transaction. If you use the code Michelle the Creator, you'll be able to see that it will update the price. I'll just put that in for you right now. We hit apply, you can see that you'll save a little over 10 bucks. So that's like getting one of the add-on services for free. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna fill out all of my information and then I'm gonna take you through the rest of the process. I can see that my setup was completed correctly. It's gonna take about 10 minutes to finish completing the server, but once that time is up, you're gonna see a little refresh button pop up at the bottom and then we're gonna just click that and then you should get your details in order to finish setting up your site. Okay, now we can see the refresh status button has popped up. So I'm just gonna click that really quickly. Once it finishes installing WordPress on your server, you can then click the refresh status button again. I can see that I've got my location, my expected monthly traffic, and then my public IP address. So I'm gonna continue on with setting up my custom domain. So I will click this button here. And then it just tells me that I need to add this record to my DNS settings. So I'm gonna do that really quickly and I'll be back in a second. I'm gonna click verify to see if it has successfully been connected. Looks like it has been. So to finish setting up my WordPress site, I could click this link right here. In the event that your domain needs just a little bit more time to continue setting up, you can always just insert the public IP address into another browser window so that you can complete the setup. So if I put in the public IP, then we can see we've got that classic install WordPress screen. So I'm just gonna continue on with that. 
And then I need to add in the database name, username, password, and host. So I'll hit let's go. There's some details that I'll need to go back and grab. The database username is WordPress and the database password is also listed right there. So let's just make sure that we've got that and then we'll insert the password right there. We're gonna add WordPress as our username as well and then click submit. And then with those credentials, that was correct. So we'll just run the installation. And here's where you can give, you know, your site title, your username, make sure that you save this password. We're just gonna call this test WordPress site. I'm gonna give myself a username of Michelle. We're gonna save this password just so we don't lose it. Make sure that you insert your email and then we can click install WordPress. Now we can log in. So I'll put in my username and my password. We'll click log in. And voila, we've got our WordPress site. Now the one thing that you might want to do in order to make sure that your domain is properly working is go to the settings, go to general, and then we can see that right now we've still currently got the IP address there. So if you do switch this to your domain, so it would probably look something a little like this. So if you've got your SSL certificate set up, just inserting that domain so that is the default address. And that's really all there is to it. Now I will say a couple of caveats. If you need to make adjustments to anything that will have to be done in the AWS dashboard. And so if you just need a quick look at where to find things, if I go back to the dashboard here, we're gonna go up to services and then I'm gonna search for EC2, we'll click on that. To find your server set up on the AWS dashboard, once you get to the EC2 dashboard, you're probably like, oh, I don't have any instances running, but you just need to make sure that you're choosing the correct location of your server. So if I set mine up on the Northern California, I need to make sure that I click that and that way I can see that I've got one instance running there. So if you're having any trouble locating, that is where you'll find it so that you can make additional adjustments. I'm very interested in seeing if this is something that you're gonna try. Let me know down in the comments if you think that this is going to make your life so much better because if you've ever set up a WordPress site on AWS before, you know that it can kind of be a nightmare. And so hopefully this is a solution that can make your life so much easier. So I hope you found this information helpful. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.